So even the Imams themselves would look at Amir al Mu'mineen as a source of. He is their role model. He is their role model, Habibi, because Imam Ali is Imam Ali, Habibi. You'll never finish talking about Imam Ali. That's the thing. Until the day of Niyama. That's the thing. And you won't. Even Allah's, uh, Rasulullah says, Oh Ali, no one knows you Absolutely. except Allah and me. <laughs> so, what can we discuss? Absolutely. So, the spirituality, what it does in a long run, really, it makes you a balanced personality whereby you're able to gauge, you're able to understand. That's why in spirituality and mysticism, they discuss at Tatwabok. Appreciate your limitations, appreciate that your knowledge is so limited. Your power is so limited. Your fame is so limited. Whatever you are able to do, appreciate that limitation. The moment you appreciate that limitation, that is a step towards self-discovery. And once you are able to discover your true self, then be rest assured, Habibi, you will get closer to Allah. Respected scholars, brothers and sisters, listening from all over the world, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, in this episode, we'll be discussing the spiritual dimensions of Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. And to assist me in exploring this topic all the way from England, the man that needs no introduction, a man that is a scholar an ocean of knowledge and to me a very dear friend and a role model my dear brother Sheikh Noor Muhammad Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah student of Hausabad <laughs> not a scholar <laughs> Habibi Alhamdulillah how was your stay in Australia Alhamdulillah so far so good so far so good so far so good you haven't had a second for yourself no complaint no, no, <laughs> no complaint so far so good Alhamdulillah. man Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah we hope and pray Allah accept it inshallah inshallah Habibi Sheikh I uh, the topic is we're utilizing your gems, your knowledge uh, from realm of spirituality and your background as well to, to look into it. Because we're at the moment now where uh, we're a few days away from the martyrdom of Amir al Mu'min Ali ibn Abi Talib. We are um, on the doorstep of Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. And as we are in the month of Ramadan, one of the things that people often ask is, you know, the, the blueprint of spirituality. Um, the month where you find a lot of people during the whole year, you know, are away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of a sudden, as it comes closer towards Ramadan, they're trying to prepare themselves to, to have that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, many of them would ask, how do I become more spiritual? How important is spirituality? So I think the first question to you, Sheikh, is how would you tell this person, he or she, that is asking the question, how do I become more spiritual? Or what is the importance, on first and foremost, about spirituality in connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yeah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Wa ala ahlihi ahlullah. It is indeed a great pleasure and honor to be here, of course, in Australia, and as well to having this very important discussion with, alhamdulillah, future of not Australian Shia community, but inshallah, the Shia world, Sayyid Abdullah. Topic of spirituality is of great importance. I think is the essence of the mission of Almighty Allah on earth. And no doubt, the essence of what our beloved prophets and the holy household came with. This is a topic in the minds, if not majority, but good number of Muslims lovers and the followers of Ahl al-Bayt, and even non-Muslims. Because you realize in each and every civilization, one way or the other, 
there is a discussion of spirituality. Yes. Because people look at the components of human existence. So i.e. we are made up of bodies and souls in a very simple way of looking at it. So the body obviously requires its provisions and the soul requires its provisions. So when they look at the soul and the provision the soul requires, so that's where the importance or the significance of spirituality emanates from. So I think discussing spirituality, the first thing we need to look at is to ask ourselves a simple question. What is spirituality? For me, that's very, very important. Because if I appreciate what spirituality is all about, then it will make it easy for me to understand its importance and how do I go about it. So it's a term from the word spirit, if you like. So that tells you it has something to do with your soul. But the soul is that spiritual component of our existence. So spirituality in a very simple term, of course, if you go deeper into Islamic discussions, like into mysticism, for example, that we normally call Arafan or Tasawwuf in other schools of thought. You know, it's a way of reaching the highest heights when it comes to spirituality within Islamic domain. In other words, spirituality or Irfan is making sense of your environment with the purpose of reaching highest heights. It's a way of appreciating the main goals and essence of existence. That's for me what spirituality is all about. So I, I, love, I love how you said that, Sheikh, because when you, when, you, when you break it down, like you said very clearly that, and especially your lecture when we, when we listened to it, you, you, you talked about, you spoke about the body and what it needs to thrive. Yeah. And you also said, just like the body, um, the human soul also needs its nourishment to thrive. Absolutely. Now, the body can only grow within a certain extent. So let's say, for example, you can care of your body. Let's say that if you want to encompass everything to do with your body, you can look at, uh, from one angle, the diet, what you eat, what you intake, the, the different timings of when you oh. eat, when you intake it, uh, body building, for example, to, you know, to gain what you are looking to gain yeah. depending on the um, kind of the outlook that you want for your body or the goals that you set for your body whether it's you know muscle growth or weight loss or whatever have you you have a goal in mind and then you make that, that goal by setting you know smaller goals in the process until you achieve that greater goal now when it comes towards spiritual um, growth that particular notion, when we look at the soul, the ruh, Amir al-Mu'mineen has a, a tradition that I came across. And Amir al-Mu'mineen says that very beautifully as well, that he says, just like the human body has six particular characteristics, the soul likewise has six specific characteristics. Now, just to mention a few, he says, as an example, he says, Hayatuha ilmuha. Allah. So it's, it's life... Just like we have life in our physical body, our spiritual body, which is our ruh, its life is knowledge. And in retrospect, it says, وَمَوْتُهَا جَهْلُهَا hey Allah. So that your soul, its death is in its ignorance. Yeah. And then he, he talks about other, obviously, aspects of it as well. You know, uh, he talks about شَكُهَا um, uh, is associated with its sickness oh. um, its health is its certainty as an example so these things it, it, it has the comparison there and then when you go to the tradition that you mentioned last night where you went to Surat Abasa uh, verse 24 I believe and then it says فَلْيَنْظُرُ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِ so you, you spoke about it in a inshallah when we speak about it later on to, tonight uh how important it is the food that you intake yeah. and its effect on the spiritual body. But when I remember 
going across the tradition of Imam al-Baqir, that when he's asked, he says, obviously the Qur'an has different layers. Oh. So at the first glance, you look at this particular tradition that says, فَلْيَنْظُرُ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ Now, someone may look at it in a very literal sense, which is also correct, where, you know, what do you intake? Is it halal? Is it haram? How is oh. it benefiting you? The timings, etc. But then when Imam al-Baqir is asked, فَلْيَنْظُرُ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ He refers to it, is the aspect of knowledge. Yeah. Let a person look towards the knowledge yeah. that he gains from yeah. where he's gaining yeah. it from. Yeah. So if we were to put one and one together yeah. and say that Amir Munin says that the soul hayatuha al-muha, would we say that knowledge, the pursuit of knowledge is fundamental to the growth of the soul of a human? Yeah. And if, if, if we were to take that, Sheikh, how yeah. would you, let's say, recommend for people that want to start the journey of spirituality, yeah. that have no idea where to start, how would you guide them, you know, take them by the hand and show them what are the baby steps and what can you Very preach? important, very important. No doubt, Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam are our gateways to Allah. Essence of spirituality, Habibi, is to get to Allah is to gain that closeness and proximity. And one of the best and the most authentic way of doing so is through Ahl al-Bayt. Salam Allah alayhim. Some of the amazing traditions of Ahl al-Bayt when it comes to this particular path, that is our spiritual journey, our journey towards Allah wa ta'ala. First and foremost, Anyone who is determined to embark on this very important journey is knowledge. Yes. And I will explain why mm -hmm. knowledge is important. In the lens of the Holy Quran and the traditions of our beloved Prophet and Ahl al -Bayt. I always humbly say to my dear brothers and sisters, to appreciate the essence of spirituality, you need first to understand your makeup, how you are made. Asen. So we are made up of different components, different departments, if you like. Yep. One department is intellect, akal. One department we mentioned earlier on body. One department, definitely, you may say nafs, you may say roh, you may say kalb. Depending, philosophically, there are so many discussions in this regard, what are the differences between yep. each, each, these terminologies. But just take nafs, kalb, roh, same. Okay, yep. Now, akal, what's the role of akal in our lives? It's to receive information. It's to analyze and process the information and to make judgments. Judgment is different from decision. So akal makes a judgment, meaning what? This is good, this is bad. But it leaves you there. So it's analyzed it for you. Ahsantum. So who's the decision? Ahsantum. Then body is like a TV set. Okay. Where you direct it, it goes. Sahih. Sit here, body sit. Wake up, body wakes up. Decision is with the nerves. Mm. Nafs takes a decision. That is why you look at Surah to Shams. Was Shamsi wa Dohaha. Wal Kamari Ida Talaha. Wal Nahari Ida Jalaha. Wal Layli. Follow, follow it through, my dear brothers and sisters. Wal Nafs. Wal Nahari Ida Jalaha. All the way. All the way. But when Allah gets to Nafs, He said, Wal Nafs. He didn't say Wal Nafs. Doesn't swear by the name. Asantu. Mm. So look at it. Allah swears by almost each and everything He created. Each and everything He created. And then He mentions nafs. You know why? He's trying to say, I created all these because of nafs. Mm. Okay. That's on the first level. Okay. I created Shams, Kamar, Nahar, Lail, all because of nafs. Number two, on the second level, when he mentions all this, he mentions them in a form of ma'arifa, alif lam. But when he gets to nafs, 
in a form of a nakira. So nakira to feed the umum ahyana or to feed the adama. When there is something nakira, nakira means general. When something is generalized, yeah, it means greatness. So Allah is trying to say nafs is great. Hasan. But then He said, "Wa nafsi wa ma sawaha fa alhamaha." Fujuraha watakuaha. He inspired it, which is fujur and takwa. Meaning what? Nafs can lead you to success, and nafs can lead you to failure. Asante. It takes a decision, Habibi. That's why he said, "Me, we, I will never do it. I will make sure I do it. I smash it. I grill it. <laughs> In it, that's nafs. Okay. So nafs, my dear brothers and sisters." is very very important but then go to the traditions of our beloved prophet and al bayt and we are discussing the spiritual dimension of imam amir al mu'minin salamullah alayh salamullah amir al mu'minin on numerous occasions makes it crystal clear afdalul ma'rifatayn ma'rifatun nafs ahsant because you see there are two ways of knowing allah ma'rifatul afaqiyah wa ma'rifatun nafsiyah Quran makes it very clear. Sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusihim. Hatta yatabayyana lahum anna wal haq. We'll show them our signs in the universe and in themselves. To ask Imam Amir. Ayyul ma'rifatayna anfa'a. Which one of the two ways of knowing Allah is the most beneficial? Is it through knowing the universe? Oh, Imam Ali said, ma'rifatun nafs anfa'ul ma'rifatayna. A'arafakum billah, a'arafakum bi nafsa. Imam Ali said, the one who knows Allah, meaning who knows the existence of Allah, because Allah is not a matter that has written, occupies a space, so you may not know Allah physically, but you'll be able to appreciate the existence of Allah. Amir al-Mumin is saying, the one who appreciates the existence of Allah more than anyone is the one who knows himself. So for me, to embark on a spiritual journey, first step is to know who you are. Somebody may come for it, Sayyidina Al-Aziz said, Abdullah, and say to me, Habibi, you're telling me to know myself. How do I get exactly. to know myself? That was my next question. Crucial, yeah. Habibi, yeah. crucial. Yeah. I said, Habibi, don't go far. Come closer. Let's go to Ahl al-Bayt. Salam Allah alayhi wa Knock the door of Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussain. Look at Dua Arafah mm. of Imam Abi Abdullah. He taught us ma'rifatun nafs, how to recognize and know myself. In that beautiful line, mystical line, where Imam Hussein mentioned, Ana al-faqiru fi ghina. Fakayfa la akuna faqiran fi faqri. I am poor in my richness. Why can't I be poor in my poverty? There's a line Imam Abi Abdullah is trying to highlight here. Anna, look at the next line. Jahilan fi ilmi fakayfa la akuna jahulan fi jahli. Allah. I am ignorant in my knowledge. Why can't I be ignorant in my ignorance? Here Imam al is trying to say, appreciate your limitations. Appreciate that your knowledge is so limited. Your power is so limited. Your fame is so limited. Whatever you are able to do, appreciate that limitation. The moment you appreciate that limitation, that is a step towards self-discovery. And once you are able to discover your true self, then be rest assured, Habibi, you will get closer to Allah. So know your limitation. That's the first step. Allah if you know your limitation, yeah, yeah, it becomes yeah. very easy. So many questions are asked. Habibi said, one, like, like, subhanAllah, where do we start? See, the, the phrase that we, we come back to, because <clears throat> you're saying it's, it is a journey, and you, you, you spoke very, very beautifully at the start of the lecture that it's a journey which its final abode is Allah subhanahu Absolutely. wa ta'ala. So there is always that question of, our amal in general, no. in an aspect of spirituality, no. trying to incorporate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything that we do. So the, the understanding is, or the question I should say rather, is when someone comes with the phrase in, in all their actions that we say, you know, I want to perform this particular action, qurbatan ilallahi ta'ala, to seek neeness. Now, when we understand that this aspect of neeness 
is the thing that's in question. We know clearly through Tawheed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala isn't in a particular place. Absolutely. So when you, when you try to explain the aspect of qurbatan ilallah, Good how question. do I seek meanness? Not in its proximity that is in a, a literal sense, but rather of the opinions. Um, and I'd love for you to elaborate Asante. on it to see if it's correct or, or uh, if there's another opinion that, that follows. But qurbatan ilallah subhanahu wa ta'ala in meanness of let's say as an example the greatness of particular names let's say i be, i give charity karam in the sense of neenness to that person that is all kareem yeah. and in that aspect that our souls the thing that we're trying to elevate and increase and get closer towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala craves the aspect of perfection and that's why it's drawn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and every time that you perform a good deed it gets you closer because oh. it increases that within yourself and if we were to link that why we have such a great bond with Ahlul Bayt is when oftentimes we think to ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is let's take any one of his names is Rahman or Rahim for example when we say Rahim we want to try to be Rahim, but sometimes you know we're like, but how do I manifest that? How do I manifest Karim? How do I manifest uh, Sabur? But then when we look at Ahl al Bayt, they are the ultimate manifestation, Absolutely. so it just becomes so easy to get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just by following in their footsteps because they reflect the light of Allah Absolutely. better than anyone else. Absolutely. I thought maybe no, no, you can very, very important, Sayyidina, this point that you've just highlighted. I personally believe we cannot do without Ahl al-Bayt. I second that. By looking at Ahl al-Bayt and going through their lives, you get to a conclusion that it is possible. Yes, sir. It is possible. The point of nearness to Allah or Qurb al-Ilahi, obviously we have different forms of Qurb. Mm. We have Qurb Mahdi, we have Qurb Ma'nawi. We have physical nearness. It's impossible. Yes, so when we say get to closer to Allah, we're not talking of Qurb Mahdi. Mm. Qurb Mahdi is, is not possible. Not, nobody will be able to get there. It's not possible because Allah, as we mentioned, is not a matter that has weight and occupies a space. Allah is not limited by time. Allah is not limited by space. Yes, Allah is Allah. Allah is everywhere. That's it. But then we have Qurb Ma'nawi, whereby you feel the presence of Allah wherever you may be. That's very, very important. Typical example, you look at Quran. Mm. Allah says, Wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni. Mm. Look at the next line. Fa inni qaribun. Stop there. When my servant comes to you concerning me, Allah now, speaking to his beloved prophets, tell them, Fa inni qaribun. I am closer. Which closeness are we talking about here? Not the literal sense. Ah, santum, yeah. not the literal sense. Yes, Allah is closer to us, but am I closer to him? That's when I. That's the reason why I need spirituality. Because he's close. Mm. He's close. But am I close? Which closeness? Ah, santum. About? Here, there are so many discussions among scholars, really. But the first level, closeness here means what? al milqiya Ownership. So we have different levels of ownership. We have milqiya e'tibari. We have milqiyatun haqiqiyya. We have milqiyatun haqiqiyatun haqqa. The highest one. The highest one. Mm. First is recognize ownership. Meaning what? Your and my ownership of everything we have in the world. We are just recognized owners. It means we are not true owners. Sent. The second ownership is called like, true ownership. Meaning your ownership of your thoughts. You own your thought. That's it. You will die and be buried with your thought. Maybe you share it somewhere, but you're going to be buried with your thought. Okay. The last owner... True real ownership is Allah's ownership of everything, including I and you. Okay. Karibun, that's one. Number two meaning, they said, Karib meaning what? Feeling the presence of Almighty Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, wherever you may be. Like, though you beautifully mentioned, Allah is a Rahman. How do I manifest this Rahman wherever I am in my life? Mercy, mm. generosity. So when I do that, I'm manifesting that. 
That is what we talk of qurb al-ilahi. Qurb al-ilahi mean what? Wherever I may be, whether mosque, not mosque, whether Husseinia, not Husseinia, at work, with friends, playing football, chilling, whatever, I am conscious. I am alert. Aynama tuwallu fathamma wajhu Allah Quran mentions. So that is what qurb is all about. But as you mentioned, when I look at the lives of Ahl al-Bayt, it makes it easier for me. Ascent. Because Ahl al-Bayt beautifully manifested those beautiful names of Allah in style. SubhanAllah. So that's, and, and that's the beauty of when we talk spirituality, yeah. Sheikh, and, and we spoke about this earlier, where, you know, in the realm of speaking about Amir al-Mu'minin's personality, no. you find nine out of ten people you ask them to, to talk about Amir al-Mu'mineen, they would talk about the characteristics that would be limited to his bravery, his knowledge, his justice, his wisdom. But not very often would you find people exploring his spiritual life. Now that's where, you know, the, the idea of tonight to speak about the spirituality of the Ahl al-Bayt because many people, you know, they look at Ahl al-Bayt through one particular lens or another. So, you know, they, the, the classic example, you know, live like Ali, dark like, dark like Hussein, yeah? yeah? But in, in essence, you know, even though that, that holds precedent, you know, in, in certain factors, the fact is any one of them has a complete life and every single one of them would have a role in their spiritual connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'd love for you to shed a light for the That's listeners it about how important spirituality was at, and the aspect of having Allah a central, having Allah central within each and every one of their life uh, and how that allowed them to achieve what they achieved. Asanto. You know, we are blessed. Indeed. To be the lovers and the followers of Ahl al -Bayt. We need to appreciate that Amen. in a true sense of appreciation. Why am I saying so? I'm saying so because Al al Bayt taught, guided, and led by examples. There is no field of Islam that one can do justice to its explanation without relying and depending on Al al Bayt. We're discussing spirituality. And as we explained earlier on, spirituality, I would say, it's not a rocket science. Mm. It's doable. More than the word doable. It's possible. But start baby step. Ahlul Bayt, Habibi, showed us the way on how to go about it. Number one. What's the benefit of this spirituality? Yes, Talking of spirituality, what's the benefit? And of course, today in this world that we live in, different people come with different forms of spirituality. But the best and authentic form is that of Ahl al -Bayt. Starting from our beloved prophets, up to our beloved 12 Imam. And there are so many lessons we can learn. But definitely we'll focus more on Amir al muminin tonight. Salam Allah alayhi. Salam Allah. First benefit, Habibi, of spirituality in life, it makes a person shaksiya mutma'inna, tranquil personality. Yani shaksiya wafika billahi You become a person who trusts Allah in every situation of his or her life. This doesn't happen overnight. It's easier said than that. It doesn't happen no, overnight. Definitely not. You need to build that. It's a progressive mission. It's a progressive objective. Every salat you do every day. Every dua you do every day. Every act of kindness you do every day. Complement the effort of building that. It's a bridge you are building. At first, you become shaksiya mutma'enna. Meaning what? Whatever happens to me in life, I know it is under the watchful eyes of Allah. Mm. Like the way Imam al Hussein mentioned. I found it so easy in Karbala because I know it is under the watchful eyes of Allah. Why should I be bothered? Why should I be worried? 
But as, as, as you mentioned, easier said than done. But that's the first goal and objective of spirituality. What's the second goal? Second goal, you become a shaksi ya mutawazina. Okay. Balanced personality. What do I mean by balanced personality? You are able to bring about balance between your instinct, your desire, your emotion. Yani everything mm. inside you, you are able to create a balance. You are able to create a balance between your intellect, between your you know, your heart, between your kalb. You know, to become a balanced personality is crucial. Does that, does that, does that, sorry, yeah. cut you off. Does that, does no that problem. fall into the category of each characteristic as well? As an example, yeah. when we say balanced, <coughs> excuse me, when we say balanced, like, let's take anger, for example. Yeah. Anger, in a particular spectrum, if, if someone does not get angry at all and lets everything flow freely yeah. versus the other extreme where he's angry for absolutely everything and then the balance would be to be as Ahl al-Bayt would say you know happy with our happiness yes. and anger towards our absolutely. anger so the bit, that balance would make in an essence if you do follow in the footsteps of Ahl al-Bayt your anger only there when necessary so absolutely. therefore it becomes balanced is that also absolutely that crucial aspect? crucial okay. because you see insan is a ruh mm. Soul. And this soul has faculties. First faculty of your soul is faculty of intellect. Mm. Intellect primarily solid, but it can be abused. Affected. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It can make a person arrogant. Mm. True. Thinking that he or she is better than all because of the mind he has. So there must be a balance. Yeah, because the other side of the spectrum is... Asantum. Uh... Asantum. Second faculty, faculty of anger, rage. Okay. Anger primarily is good, it's for self-defense. But then if it's not properly taken care of, it can go the extreme. Yeah. But it's important, we need anger. Mm. We need that frustration sometimes for something, I'm angry, man, I need God. I cannot sleep. I need God. I'm yearning for God. This Shah Ramadan, I'm going to ensure that I'm going to work on my soul. I'm angry. That's something good. Yeah, definitely can be utilized. Excellent. The other faculty is faculty of desire. Mm. Desire is good, Abibi. Because I desire to get closer to God. I desire to go to Hussainia. I desire to solve the cause of all il But at the same time, I can also have desire to something else. It can be abused. Yeah. Asanto. It can be abused easily. And then, of course, we have the faculty of imagination. Mm. Imagination is crucial. Without imagination, I will not embark on anything in life. I need to have that tasawwur. That's where irada comes in. Irada will happens when there is imagination that fuses together ah, Santu. so these are the faculties of our soul Mashallah. so when i take care of my soul what happens it feed in into each one of these so ah, Santu. balance, balance. Mm -hmm. so spirituality what it does in a long run really it makes you a balanced personality whereby you're able to gauge you're able to understand that's why in spirituality in mysticism they discuss at tatabok tatabok meaning what what i think here and what I do outside measures, yeah, 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 yeah. So that's one benefit that's of spirituality. Second. That's Beautiful. the second benefit. Yeah. Beautiful. Now we go to the third benefit. You see, third benefit of spirituality is what you get attracted to God and anything related to God easily. Okay. Easily, salat is happening. You just get attracted to it. Affairs of all little bit, you get attracted to it, and you feel you want to do more. Mm. You feel you want to get into it. That's what spirituality can do to your soul. It prepares the soul to become a recipient of anything godly, anything divine. That's very, very important. And the last but certainly not the least benefit. You become beneficial. You become a piece of blessings for people around you. That's... Yeah, you become a source of blessings, a source of peace. Yani when people are around you, they feel good. And in this line, you know, we have that tradition from Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam that al alimu man idha nadarata ilayhi yudhakiruka al akhirah. 
الوجه نظره الى وجه العالم عباده سو اي سيد ا سكولر از ذا وان جست لوكينج ات هيم او هير ريمايندز يو اوف جاد ريمايندز يو اوف اخره سو ذا سكولر نو بيكم ا بيس اوف بليسنس ا سورس اوف بيس سو ايماجين ايماجين يو هاد ا هول كوميونيتي ذات از ايبل تو ريتش ذات فورث ايماجين ذاتس ذاتس وات وي تراينا ذاتس وات وي ار تراين تو اتشيف حبيبي اند اي ويل سي والله وي شود نوت جيف اب It can be hard. We live in a very complex, unpredicted world, unpredictable world, but it's doable. Why am I saying so, Habibi? Ahlul Bayt managed because of God. They made God central to everything. Look at their lives throughout their lives. God is central. You look at just simple from the Holy Prophet, because we'll come to Imam Ali, Ali Salam more. The Holy Prophet. Prophet, Allah gave him everything. But for him to show that appreciation to God, he had to keep night vigil. Mm. Tradition told us feet were swollen. Ascent. This Ubudiya, but this A'la al-Maratib, Maratabat al-Shukr. So the height is the thankfulness. Yeah. Shukr. Uh, okay. Whatever happens to me, it's not tawakkul anymore. It's not rida anymore. It's not taslim anymore. Shukr. Because tawakkul means what? Okay, I play my part. Yeah. Allah will deal with the rest. Rida, no, no, I'm happy with it. Mm. I'm okay, I'm happy. No big deal. I've come to terms with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hassan, yeah, yeah. Taslim, you know what? It wasn't for me. It's taken away. So why the fast? No big deal. I can't no. do anything. I thank you, God, for taking it away from me. Subhanallah. I thank you. So Prophet will say, "Afala akuna abdan shakura." Asante. Can't I be grateful? Yeah. Say the Fatima, salamullah alaiha. Mm. Look at it beautifully. Prophet would come to the house. He would realize she was grinding, breastfeeding, you know, dust on her clothes, you know, injuries, bruises on her. Yep, yep. Palm on her hand, face paled, for example. Prophet will say, "Ta'ajjali mararat al-dunya, mm. halawat al-akhirah." Isn't it? Asant, asant. What will you say? Alhamdulillah, ala na'maihi wa shukur ala alaihi. Yani, Sayyid Fatma sallallahu alaihi wasallam was grateful to Allah for his situation. Marabat al-shukur, Habibi. It's so important. We'll come to Imam Amir al-Mu'mini. Look at Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba sallallahu alaihi wasallam before every salah. Before every salah, narration would tell us he would shiver during wudu, and they would ask him why. He would say, "Do you know who am I going to stand in his presence?" That's spirituality. That's what we are discussing, brothers and sisters. We're trying to inspire ourselves and inspire you. 100%. These are ahlul bait. Ahlul bait are multi-dimensional. And tonight we're discussing the spiritual dimension of the life of Imam Amir al-Mu'minin alayhi salam. And even Imam Hassan al-Mushtaba sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when you go to, when you go to stand there to pray, either during the Aqama or before Takbirat al-Ihram, miskinu ka bibabik. Imam Hassan will mention. Imam. He yeah. said, miskinu ka bibabik. Your miserable servant is at your doorstep. Fakiru ka birahlik. The one who is in need of you is on a journey towards you. Ya gilaf al-mustaqid. For example. That's him. Abu Abdullah, of course, you know very well. Mm. You read Dua Arafah, I always tell people, just go through Dua Arafah. You'll come across gems of spirituality. Imam Zain al-Abdin, salam Allah alayhi. He's known for that. Because if you examine the lives of Ali al-Bayt, each one of them has highlight to his life. Highlight, it means what? What the person did more. So, for example, if you take Amir al-Mu'minin, the main highlight of his life is justice, as you know very well. Mm. So he epitomized Allah's attribute al adala. Imam Ali, we'll talk this spirituality. Yeah. Now he came Imam Asal Mushtaba. He epitomized Allah's attribute of salam, peace. Sayyidu Shuhda, Allah's attribute of izzah. That's why he epitomized in Karbala. 
But Imam Zain al Abidin Habibi, Hubbullah, the love for Allah Taala. Sahifat al Sajjadi is all about crying and appealing to Allah Taala. Munajat, 50 munajat of Imam Zain al Abidin. Just whispering. Ahsantu. Yeah, yeah. So, Imam, Imams, my dear brothers and sisters, really, 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 you can't leave Imams and look for spirituality somewhere else. How can you? It's impossible. You, you, you said. Imam Zain al Abidin yeah. epitomizes. Yeah. And the, the interesting thing is that we were discussing a, a tradition where Imam Zain al Abidin brings the, from Imam al Baqir, the written scriptures. It's bringing me from Imam, Imam, Ali. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib. He reads it, yep. he puts it down, and he says, Where are we from the hey, worship, man, worship, ya Ali. worship of Amir al Mu'mineen? So when you look at if you were to look at spirituality as the connection through ibadah, for example, no. then Imam Zain Abdin, Sayyid Sajidin, you know, everyone looks at to be the greatest worship. I says, where are we Top. from the worship of Amir al Amir al -Mumini. No doubt, Habib. So in that perspective, you know, you come across traditions that, like, if you are a Shia, if you want to be a Shia, uh, as, as for the tradition of Imam al-Askari, uh, one of the five signs is that you pray 51 rakats. Absolutely. So how many did Imam Ali pray? The traditions were thousand. a thousand rakats. So when Imam Sajjad sees this, and he says, it's Sajjadeen. So even the Imams themselves would look at Amir al Mu'mineen oh, as a source of. He is their role model. He is their role model, Habibi. Because Imam Ali is Imam Ali, Habibi. You'll never finish talking about Imam Ali That's the thing. until the day of Qiyamah. That's the thing. And you won't. Even Allah, uh, Rasulullah says, Oh Ali, no one knows you Absolutely. except Allah and me. <laughs> so, what can we discuss? Absolutely. So, looking at the spirituality of Imam Ali as we head towards Layal al Qadr and the nights of the painful martyrdom hmm. of Imam Ali, it is important we draw our attention and the attention of our beloved viewers who inshallah will remember us in their du'as and inshallah. will remember you in our du'as of some of the nuggets, if you like, and the gems from the spirituality of Imam Ali al As we prepare ourselves to mourn and lament over his tragedy, remember, he was attacked in the mosque, in the masjid, in mehrab, Ibadah. Imam woke up, went to the mosque to have that conversation with his beloved and merciful creator. And that's where the enemy attacked him. For me, that's number one. It's very, very It's important. very important. You love Imam Amir Mominin, I have no doubt. Follow his footsteps. These are nights of Ibadah. Imam knew what was going to happen. Like in the case of Imam Abi Abdullah. So he engrossed in his Ibadah. Because Allah is the beginning and Allah is the end. When we read this ayah, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajaun. So mystics, they look at this ayah sometimes differently. That this inna lillah is a descending arrow. Wa inna ilay rajun is ascending arrow. Okay. So we came to Allah, all of us. That's our origin, all of us. And Allah is our return. So here we're not talking of death. We're talking of our spiritual journey towards Allah. Because they say Allah comes to each and every one of us in full. How you take Allah depends on you, Habibi said Al Aziz. Mm. Some take him 1%, and their feeling of Allah's presence is something else. Some take Allah 10%, their feeling of his presence is something else. Some it's took him 100%, and they became infallible. Allah. Quran makes it very clear. It's tabaqat, stages. And look at the ayah. Not ila rabbina, ila rabbik. Meaning what? Your spiritual level? It's different from my spiritual level. How I feel God is different. 
Imam Amir Mun said, Inama hiya nafsi orawedu ha bit taqwa ahsantum. It's an exercise I do. I need to train my nafs to get used to taqwa, to get used to consciousness. Which consciousness? Allah's consciousness. So Amir al Mu'minin trained himself. Hence, he became the epitome and the embodiment of love for Allah. Hence, when the enemy struck Imam, Imam chanted and called out, Fustu wa Rabbil Ka'ba, referred the matter to Allah. Mm. Allah is the beginning and Allah is the end. And our channel to Allah are the Ahlul Bayt. Hence, we discuss in Imam Amir al Mu'minin. He said, Fustu wa Rabbil Ka'aba, by the Lord of Ka'aba, I am indeed successful. That's the essence and the epic of spirituality, Habibi. This is our Imam. Let us all try as much as we can to learn from him. Let's go forward. Number two, nugget and dimension of imam spirituality dua us sabah allah akbar powerful dua try try to solid <laughs> if you go through this dua it takes you 10 minutes 15 minutes habibi if you do it every day because one tradition imam ali said prepare for your next day by waking up at night because it gives life to your soul. That's it. But Imam has given us a document, a piece of dua, to use it as a tool to go about our lives the next day. The line really, Ya Mandela ala dhatihi bi dhati, for example. The one whose essence indicates to his essence. Highly philosophical, Habibi. Meaning, referring to Allah. But we said Allah's existence is his essence, and his essence is his existence. You may have existence separate from your essence, but they said, you know, Allah in philosophy. They said Allah's existence is his essence, meaning what attributes of Allah are not distinct from Allah. Allah is Rahman, Rahman is Allah. That's why Quran said, Kulidu Allah, awidu Rahman, ayyamma tadu'u, falawul asma wal husna. So Rahman is Allah, Rahim is Allah, Rauf is Allah. So Amir al Mu'minin is inviting you. Reflect. Huwa dalla ala dhati bi dhati. Watanad, watanazaha an mujanasati makhlukati. Wajalla an mula amati kaifiyati. Ya man karuba min khatarat al-zunun. Allah hazat al-uyun. Even your twinkling of an eye is far away from getting to appreciate the essence of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. So that's number two. It's a document I will refer my humble self and my dear brothers and sisters. Get, you know, keep in touch with this dua. Next, Baba, Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen in his sujood, but he had some unbelievable manajat, Habibi. Yes, Imam Zain Abdin taught us manajat. Mm. But Imam Amir al-Mu'mineen had some amazing manajat also. Because you remember the difference between manajat and dua. Sent. Manajat is habib, a hadith al-mahbubi bima, bi habibi. It's the conversation of the lover and the beloved. Sent. So when it comes to manajat, same level. I'm just having a heart-to-heart conversation with you. But dua, I see him higher, I see myself lower. But Imam Amin Umin in a famous manajat, Ilahi kafa bi izzan an takuna li rabba. Spirituality. Wa kafa bi fakhran an akuna laka abda. Anta kama uhibbu fajalni kama tuhib. So I'm honored and dignified that you are my Lord. And I'm proud that I'm your servant. But Imam Ali said, Allah, you are the way I want. Make me the way you want. want. Make me. So this is our Imam. The spirituality of Amir al is unbelievable. That according to Imam, Ubudiyya is simply Izaharul Mamlukiyya Lillahi Azzawajal. It's to demonstrate that I'm absolutely owned by Allah. And this is why you come to so Imam Jafar Sari, Salam Allah, Allah said, al ubudiyya to Jawharatun. One narration says, al ubudiyya Jawharun, kun huha al rububiyya said, servitude is what? It's a jewel. But what's the reality of this jewel? Divinity. So Amir al-Mu'minin, alayhi salam, in his munajat, he will call on Allah, Allah, you are the way I want, really. Just make me the way you want, man. Just, just 
Just make me the way you want. I'm ready for it. Make me the way you want. That's so these are some of the things we can really extract from the life of Amir al-Mu'min. Because it's, it's beautiful when you refer to, in your first point, when you said Allah comes in his whole. Yeah. It just depends on how much you want to Ahsant. go towards Allah Ahsant. subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I remember, because you, you touched on it, and I know it's a, in some circles it might be looked at to be a very controversial issue when we discuss the topic of Arfan. Yeah. Now, Arfan has many let's say, descriptions of etymology. So amongst the ones that I've come across, correct me if I'm wrong, obviously, Sheikh, um, but basically, if you were to take it from the root word Araf, no. they would say that Araf refers to a scent. Yeah. Meaning, when you delve into this aspect of going on the path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, each person, it's, it's not a knowledge-based thing, but rather an experience-based thing, whereby... Absolutely. The closer you get towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have your own relationship with Allah. And only you can smell that scent, Allah, that Allah. beauty. So each and every person, you can never like, they give an example where if you were to taste honey, yeah. you know what it tastes like. Absolutely. Where you will never be able to explain to me how honey tastes Absolutely. like, lest I taste sure. that honey. So sure. you, for a person that has connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sees Allah in everything, will be very difficult for them in their everyday life to explain to someone that has not had that connection Absolutely. or felt the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this aspect of spirituality in essence, what we're trying to discuss is if we were to take Amir al-Mu'mineen, the Ahl al-Bayt as an example, how did they live their life? If we were to extract from them these gems that you mentioned and then we start at a very basic level, because I remember yesterday you mentioned very beautifully, don't overcrowd yourself. Yeah. Some people, when they try to become religious, yeah, they're man. like, I need to know everything. You overdose, man. I need to know everything. Overdose prescription, exactly. man. Absolutely. And then it, it just, it, it has a negative impact. And, it, and, it, and somewhere, man, you, you, you know, this reminds me, before we go forward, of a beautiful tradition from Imam Musa al-Kadhim. Salam Allah alayhi. I also find the same tradition absolutely from the Holy Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That little kulubi akbalun wa itbar. Okay. You know, kulub, hearts. Mm. You want to say soul, fine. Hearts. It has sometimes attention, it's attentive, sometimes not. But to understand it very clear, hearts are of two moods. Good mood and bad mood. Sometimes you say you're in a good mood, bro. Sometimes body, man. Nobody has loved you, but you're in a bad mood. Definitely. You wake up in the morning, you don't want to talk to anyone, bro. You just want to be in your private, alone, mm. reflect, think, whatever. But then look at the next part of the tradition. So he said, Lil Kulubi Akbalun wa Edbar. Faiza Adbarat. Okay. 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 I really want brothers and sisters to appreciate this tradition. Blueprint for what Solid. To do. Okay. Solid. So hearts are of two moods. Or each person has two moods. This, mashallah, you're on top of your game. Solid. You lively. This finished. Mm. Reach a rock bottom, if you like. So the tradition says the days that you know you're not in a good mood, really. Just stick to wajibat. Don't try to add too much. Just stick to wajibat. Wajibat today you're gonna to be questioned about it on the day of Kriyama. Yeah. Stick to wajibat. But the days you realize, you know what? I'm on top of my game, man, bro. Wajibat and Mustahabat Nawafi. So basically, scholars discuss this into yeah. some more details. And one, one I found really fascinating is that. Why this tradition? That if you try to add more overdose, you destroy the soul. You destroy the soul. That's very... You're piling it too much. 
because you know narration another narration no bismillah asanto there is another narration here these are all spiritual narrations rawihu qulubakum saa ba'da saa fa inna al-quluba tamil kama tamil al-abda allahu akbar <laughs> so easy easy on your soul asanto yeah. you know you know what refresh your souls hour after an hour I mean what do something take a bit of break do something else you know because what the souls also get tired the way bodies get tired the souls get bored the way bodies get bored Man, you're going to make that tradition uh, on the microphone when they're doing amal for like absolutely <laughs> don't overdose yourself yeah, bro yeah. it's not about finishing yeah it's the impact of it so al albayt alhamdulillah they've given us the blueprint go baby step so i always tell people said al aziz different scholars depending on their understandings of the verse of the holy quran and teachings of al albayt provided us with different levels of spirituality that a person can try there are different ones really so maybe i will share one or two mm. The one I would like to share first is they said there are three levels for example. The first level they call it marhala to suak. Okay. Suak for suak. Wa kharamu suak for example. Mm mm mm. So what is marhala to suak? Is this stage where you just become overwhelmed that Allah is present, Allah is in existence, that's it. I'm overwhelmed. Is that, is that is that a first stage or yeah. is that an end stage? No, that's first. Stage. That's a first stage. Okay. So, for example, you are told, "Say, Sistani is coming next week mm. to Sydney to this center, Usainia, Sayyidah Khadija. Salam Allah. Yeah. Salam Allah. He's coming. Obviously, depending on the level of respect you have for Sayyid Sistani, you become overwhelmed mm. that Marja or Allah is visiting me. No, no, somebody who is not even a Muslim, but prominent figure is visiting the community. He becomes sort of overwhelmed. Yeah. Baba Jalla Jalalu who is everywhere. Imam Ali said, "Who Allah wa fi kulli shayin aya tadullu ala annahu mawjud." Allah Akbar. Allah, this Allah is no wake up from sleep and wake up from your deep slumber. In each and everything, there is a sign indicating that God is in existence. So first marhala. you become overwhelmed second marhala of course high one marhalatul mahq is our funny terms yeah yeah marhalatul mahq is what la yufakkir illa fi allah wa la yara illa allah he doesn't think except allah everything is about allah and this imam ali comforted and tells us ma ra'aytu shay'an illa wa ra'aytu allah qabla wa ma akhu wa ba'da mashallah I've not seen anything except I see Allah before it, with it, and after it. It's, it's just Allah through, through man. Everything is Allah, Habib, and Ghali. That's the second level. That's the second level. Mahak. Mahak. Is there a third? Third level, marhala to the mahwi. Okay. Al mahwi. Yomahu Allah ma yasha wa ithbit. Al mahwi. Meaning what? Baba, I'm not in existence even. Mm. The one and only in existence is Allah. Some, of course, use the word fana here. You yeah, annihilate. Yeah. You get dissolved in Allah. I'm not I'm not there. Who am I? It's Allah, man. That's it. Is Allah is Allah so I'm collapsed in Allah. I'm dissolved in Allah. I'm mesmerized by the light of Allah. See so, see so when when you say that it it reminds me of I remember I did a, a research on on how you can role models. Yeah. And so those kind of overlap in the sense of let's say I've, for example i want to to become like a particular character yeah. so we look at history seeing who for example took rasulullah to be an example and they say people knew him at different levels some people knew rasulullah biography wise yeah. didn't have an impact on their lives the next level understood his person and what he stood for um from a legal standpoint and islamic standpoint therefore he followed these teachings and then you have the third which were the highest which dissolved like Absolutely. you said in the love of rasulullah so much so 
that Rasulullah and the Quran testifies, it says, and Fusana wa and So, in, 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 in that particular level, Shaykhna, uh, you know, if, if we were to put it into a perspective that people can dissolve in the, the love and following in a human, so imagine on a, on a higher order. Absolutely. I mean, Imam Amir al Mu'minin himself, it really, in a true sense, took the Holy Prophet as his role model. He, uh, to such an extent, Imam would say, Ana abdu mina abidi Muhammad. Allah. It's not like Imam was worshipping the Holy Prophet. Exactly. But this is my gate to Allah. This is my role model, man. I'm melted in the Holy Prophet because he dissolved me in Allah. He just pick my hand, he take me to Allah. So that's very, very important. Aim is Allah Allah. But you need someone to hold your hand to Allah. And we're discussing Imam Amir al Mumin salam Allah. Allamani Rasulullah al Fababin. Ahsantu min al ilm. He taught me thousand doors of knowledge. Each door is opening other thousand doors of knowledge. Some of these doors are ma'rifa of Allah, are irfanic teachings, spirituality, if you like. So this is the third level. Third level, you know what? I don't own anything here. Even my nafs, no. You know, they, they discuss this, you know, in Irfan when they talk of uh, ma'rifa to nafs. Mm. They said, your nafs, is it something which is lahu, Rabita or Artabat Billa or Aino Rabt Billa. What's the difference? Ah, mm. So let's do it in English. Yeah. So they said, if you take your nafs, is it something that has connection with Allah or no? Is it, is it a real connection with Allah? So if you say, my nafs has connection with Allah, okay, today it may have, tomorrow it may not have. Exactly. But if you say, it's a real Aino Rabt Billa, Ya Azza wa Jal. It is a real connection, meaning what? There is no nafs without Allah. You can't imagine nafs without Allah. Yani nafsi aynu rabt billah, ana aynu al-faqr billah, antum al-fuqara ilallah. I am a real poverty to Allah. Beginning and the end, I cannot function without Allah. For, for a second, if Allah releases the world, the entire world will collapse, Habibi. So, Great personalities like the Ahlul Bayt, they got to that level. That's why they attain martyrdom. Many people, when I ask them, what's the meaning of martyrdom? They said to die. No, no, Habibi. That's not martyrdom. Martyrdom, Habibi, it is iqla, hubbi dunya wa that min al nafs. It's to remove the love of this world and self from your heart. That is why it has what they call al ihsas al muqaddas. Martyrdom, it has what? Holy feeling. What is holy feeling? Al bahthu ila al haqiqa. Aw nahwa al haqiqa. Looking for the truth. And takhtit al khulud. Looking for something permanent. And that person has adhamatun nafs. Greater heart. So, martyrdom, Amir al Mu'minin, first war of al Kaaba is because what? Iqla hubba dunya. Or nafs, or with that mean and nafs. So therefore, you see, these levels, I would say personally, my level or our level is the first level. Become overwhelmed. You know, the way when you are next to your boss at work, you become overwhelmed sometimes, bro, and my sister. Because, you know, this boss may fire you, man, mm. or this boss may promote you. You know what I mean? So you need to work. I, I will give, I'm just going to give you some practical tip. Yep. What you need to do, you know, in a baby step, to be overwhelmed a bit. So it's a good thing. Yeah, it's so I mean, solid. Some people might think it might be a bad thing to be overwhelmed. But no, it's, no, it's a very good God thing. Day, I'm overwhelmed. I'm being emotional because I feel Allah's presence. I feel the spark. I mean, I'm sure all of us experience this sometimes. Sometimes you pray in Salah, you feel like the Salah should not come to an end. Oh. That moment you are feeling the spark. Mm. Sometimes you pick up Quran, you just read it, read it, no one to finish. The spark. Can you imagine if most of the times you have this spark? So first practical tip really is what we call Ahatun Nadam. I need to regret my past. Imam Zayla Abdin, he tells us in Dua Tawbah, in Kana Nadam, in Nadam, in Tawbah, fa'inni wa'izzatuka min al-Nadimina, Habibi. Ya Allah. 
I need to regret, to regret my past, really. What is to regret my past? You know, you try to pledge that I'm not going to repeat it anymore. Everybody has a past. Everybody has a past. Like, I had a program earlier on tonight with the ladies. Mm. I love bless them. And I said to them, now before we pay our allegiance to the Imam of our time, I want you to take one minute between you and God. Identify one sin you've been committing and pledge Allah you're going to stop from now. Pin drop silence. Wow. Everybody was focused. Wallahi al -Azim. You could see the sincerity on their faces and the determination. So first, regret the past. Second is what they call kasha'arira. Allah unazzala ahsan al-hadisi kitabam mutashabiha. Mathani takshairu min hujulud al-ladhina yakshara rabba. So Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, what he's trying to say here is that whenever I remember my sin, the skin should shiver. Mm. Should shiver. Because I can't believe I did that. Ahsan to. And then the last one is Al-Bukha wa Nahib. I need to cry. I need to cry. I need to cry. Mom said, Labdin, he said, Fankulni, ila darajati tawba, wa'ainni bulbukha ala nafsi. Bulbukha ala nafsi. Huh? Ya man, Amir Mumin, Fakad Afnaitu. Yeah, Bismillah. Omri, bil amali wal ajal. Allah help me. Allah move me to the level of Tawbah. And then help me to cry over myself. Because I've really wasted my time with so many ambitions. On that note, no. would you say that one of the greatest things or of the high ranking things that would help the journey of spirituality, like you just mentioned, would the tears shed be one of them? Oh, Habibi. Solid. Silahuhul. Solid. Bukha. Imam Zain al-Abdin, Habibi, dua Abu Hamza al-Thumali. Eh, brothers, look at it. This is Shah Ramadan. Dua al-Tawbah, dua Abu Hamza al-Thumali. These are du'as for Shah Ramadan. Wa maali ila abqi. Wa la adri ila ayna masiri. Allah. Why can't I cry? Because I don't know where am I heading to. Imam Zain al-Abdin, Masoom. And he went on to say, Death is over me. It's over my head. It may happen overnight. Then he said, why won't I cry? Why can't I cry for the removal of my soul? Why can't I cry for the darkness of my grave? Mm. Why can't I cry for the narrowness of my grave? So cry tears is very important. And you know, obviously prophet tells us we have two types of tears. False tears and true tears. So true tears, you don't prepare for it. Once you, remo you feel remorseful, you regret the past, and you feel that pain, that pinch, why did I sin? You sin Allah's blessings over me. When you feel the pinch, Wallah, my dear brothers and sisters, sin. That sin will ensure tears begin to overflow from your eyes. Be yourself. Spiritual journey is a personal and individual experience. What would you say, Sheikh, to people that say, I want to become spiritual, I want to connect with Allah, but I feel like there's a barrier between me. No. So do we have traditions, or can you elaborate on traditions that say that there could be things that you're doing that act as a barrier towards Absolutely. your connection to Allah Absolutely. subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because Absolutely. of the important nature of things that we should remove these things, but first we need to identify them before we go on that journey because to no avail if absolutely still Habibi, in our life. first thing first and this tradition for me I'm Amir alayhi salam that instead of trying to do good in terms of worshiping first deal with your sins okay that's the first barrier sin will deprive you of the taste of ibadah you tend to feel worship is boring it's bad. Okay. You don't feel good. No fruits, no connection, no spirituality. 
sin is dangerous. You know, Imam Zayl Abdin Salamullah Alayhi tells us, sin is a flame of fire in the heart. So if one commits and keeps committing, and we have another tradition from Imam Jafar Sadiq also in this regard, it makes the fire boil in the heart. Okay. It makes it difficult to see them. Imam Jafar Sadiq said, no. It creates a black spot on the heart. It's a dot. When you commit again another dot, it becomes dark. Quran, Kalla barana ala kulubihim. Makam. Ran meaning rain, rustness. What they've been doing, meaning of sins, made the heart rusted. It's rusted. So God doesn't penetrate, Habib. It's without the nafs they call. It makes it dark. So that's the first barrier, Habib. Sins. Sins, wallah. Sins. So before you go towards a journey, try to remove the sins from try your life. Move. And I say, look, pledge Allah, I'm going to stop. Doors of Tawbah are open. Ataibu minadzam become Allah dhambala. Ataibu Habib or Rahman. Anyone who repent, it's like you've never committed any sin in your life. And Allah laughs, the most merciful laughs, the repentance. That's why Mamzil Abdin asked Manajat Taibi. Manajat Taibi. Ilahi alabasatin la khatwaya ya thawba madalati. Wa jallalani tabao de libasa maskanati. Wa amata kalbi adimu jinayati. Fa ahayi bi tawba tim minka ya amali wa bogeti. Mamzil Abdin. Revive me. Ah santu. Revive me. Ah santu. Because this sin has clothed me with the clothes of misery. Misery in whose eye? That's why they said you have to have this al ihsas bil gurba in spirituality. Mm -hmm. You have to have this feeling of loneliness. You no know, feeling of loneliness. They said not in front of anyone, in front of your sons. Because sins are things that you cannot tell everyone. Exactly. So you have to have that ihsas bil gurba. I feel that loneliness. So deal with your sin, my dear brothers and sisters. It can be hard when a sin becomes part and parcel of a person. And wallah, be rest assured, brothers and sisters, Allah is love, Allah is merciful. He's willing to forgive you so long as you are determined to be sincere. That's one. Sincere. Number two, Habibi, environment can be a barrier. This I take people to, again, Abu Hamza al Kumali. Where he said you to start in Salam Allah, Allah, divided gatherings into two. Majalis uh Tawabin and Majalis al Battalin. You see how Imam really spoke and addressed Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Maybe you've seen me in those gatherings of the dead ones. Gatherings of those who are corrupt. And hence you put a burial between I and you. Yusuf Aklayton. Ah, Santum! Mm. So, what do we mean by these gatherings? There are people who never reminds you, remind you of God. You there with them, gossip, backbiting. Salat, no big deal. These are dead people. Imam Zalabdi said, be careful. Otherwise, they will ensure barrier between you and God. Connection severed. Asantum. Okay. So you have to be with Tawabin. Tawabin, not just people who repent, but those people who remind you of Allah. Asant. It's so important. So that's number two. We need to be careful about that. Number three, Habibi, that we need to be really careful about. It's our inclinations in life. What are you inclined to? It can drive you crazy. And it can take you away from God. No, no, I'm inclined to watching movies. Which movies are we talking about here? If it's a good one, why not? No, no, I'm inclined to go to that place. For Exactly. So our inclined. That's why they said personality of a person is defined by his thought and his inclination. So our inclinations are crucial. We need to be careful of every step we take as by the traditions of prophets and Ahlul Bayt We have to be careful of our inclination. And then the last but certainly not the least, Bari al-Habib. Allahu Akbar. We don't bother to ask God to help us. There are many, they don't make it all. 
So we've severed our connection before it started. You know, when I look at the teachings of Al Bad, really, where you will find even Imam Zil Abdin Salam Allah say, La ilaha ta kill ni illa nafsi tolfa ta aini. Abaya. Don't leave me alone with myself for a twinkle of an eye. For a twinkle of an eye. That's an Imam. That's an Imam. Masu. Of exactly. So, I think this lack of calling on Allah to help us on this journey has created a lot of barrier. Of course, there is another one way by people think it's just a thought. Again, I will put it under the inclination. It's too hard. It's very difficult to connect with Allah. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. very difficult. You know, Shaykh, this world is a very complicated world. Left, right challenges. Oh, it's through the challenges. That's why in Irfan, mm -hmm. you know, they said, Tarukul Ladha bin Ajli Ladha. Okay. It's a scene. It's an Irfan scene. Yeah, pretty clear. I like it. It's like to say, Al Faraju fi Intidar al Faraj. Hassan. So Tarukul Ladha, ignore a taste for a taste. Meaning what? Ignore temporary tastes. And wait for the permanent one. Awesome. Temporary taste, you know, your desire tells you. Go chill, go drink. Say alcohol, for example, or forbid. Go shake the hand of no Maharam, a lady who has nothing to do when it comes to family relation, or a gentleman. No, no, go smoke some unlawful substance. Go rig, for example. If you ignore it, this leather, prepare for the best leather. And that leather, Habibi, is what? You're going to feel God. And when you feel God, what happens? That feeling of God will resist any sin coming towards you. That's why people ask questions. Was said, I was Abel for Labas, for example, and said, is it a Masumi? I said, no, you're not Masumi like al -Albert. But what they did was, you can't pinpoint to any of their sins. They never committed a sin, bro. Yeah. But what they did is what they call, of course, in philosophy and also mysticism, that they have control over their nerves. self attained infallibility. We need to do that. And it's doable, brothers and sisters. Wallah. You can get to your own level. That's fine. But don't stop making them. Please, I beg you, don't stop making them. Make Allah proud first and foremost, and make Allah a little bit proud. Prepare, determined, work hard. I, I want to I wanna end in, in mentioning something that many people might think that, you know, spirituality is something of like a side thing. So they say, for example, the important aspects are, let's say learning knowledge many many times people just learn knowledge and encyclopedias but they never have applied it in their life now i came across a tradition which i'm sure you're very familiar with sheikh where it speaks about how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala once you are got conscious in your existence in your everyday that allah gives you everything else when he says bismillah rahman rahim and i mention it men من أخلص لله أربعين يوما، سام ترشي أربعين صباحا، فجر ينابيع الحكمة في قلبه على لسانه ومن قلبه على لسانه. So you know, just taking that tradition that it says you know, if you are sincere, God conscious for forty. That forty is a different aspect altogether. You know, it's another ball game. That that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will bestow upon Absolutely. you, and then there's like knowledge is something, but then hikmah supersedes it to another Absolutely. level. Absolutely. So the fact that Allah is saying you just, you know, be God conscious, just for forty days, and I'll give you something that Allah refers to as something ah. great, which is hikmah. Allah. Allah. So 
uh, when you're looking at it from that angle, I think people that want to put spirituality on the side note should actually consider it to be something that need to work on in a primary <laughs> notion. Um, <laughs> Insha'Allah, Sheikh, I, I've taken much of your time. No, it's a pleasure, it's a pleasure. It was Thank you. a You've beautiful, done well, beautiful well, discussion, it beautiful discussion. Oh, no, no, I've learned so much from no, you, and no, no. I'm sure our, our, our viewers, learned, learned viewers our Allah. listeners would learn so much more. <laughs> Insha'Allah, <laughs> we can have you again. You've blessed us, no, no, and I thank you for myself. You have to bless us, inshallah. And thank you so much. Habibi, inshallah. Habibi. We end on, on that note. Uh, inshallah, the Layal Qadr are coming up very soon. Istishad of Amir al Mu'mineen. Um, please try to apply the teachings of Amir al Mu'mineen. Try to follow in his footsteps. Um, and as Sheikh discussed very beautifully, baby steps. Do not overwhelm yourselves. Uh, make sure and ensure that you practice in a manner that you can keep practicing. Uh, for the future as well. So inshallah, we end on that note. هذا وآخر دعوانا وأنا الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. <تصفيق>